Hey, what's going on guys? So in today's video, we're talking about cell phones and cell phone technology. Um, I have my original phone. This is my first cell phone. I'm kind of making this video for the younger audience. Obviously, if you're, you're my age or close to my age or older, uh, you remember all of it. You remember the days of AOL dial-up internet. You remember the days where there was no internet. I remember those too. When I was a little kid, there was no internet. Can you imagine that? If you're young watching, can you imagine your life without the internet? You know what? It's kind of tough to say, but in a lot of ways, it was a lot better. Um, I love technology. I, I really, really do. Unfortunately, all technology gets abused by scam artists and bad people. Um, so every time you know we create something that's great, it is uh, it's taken over by the evil. And uh, unfortunately, and fortunately, the internet has affected all of our lives. Um, some good things about the internet. We have communication with anyone in the world at any time. That is pretty amazing. If you explain what the internet was to someone in 1985, um, they would think that that's some kind of scientific future, maybe 500 years from now, or 100 years from then. But uh, it, it just, it very much came quick. So when I was in high school, um, cell phones just became a thing. All right, remember we have AOL dial-up internet, which uh, I was telling, it's funny because I, I broke out this phone as well as a bunch of other phones, and I'll tell you in a second why, but um, I, my, um, my niece and nephew, uh, mostly my niece, because she's a little bit older, she, uh, she was blown away by the idea that you had to hang up the phone if you wanted to go on the internet, or if you're on the internet, you had to, and the phone rings, you had to get off the internet to answer it. That like was mind-blowing to her. And then obviously, what's fun too is uh, I was telling her how to you know, text with the old cell phones and stuff. So it's cool, it's cool obviously telling younger people Here's how it used to be, and it's funny because when I was younger, I remember older people telling me, oh, I remember when we had to do this. I remember when we did that. I remember when we had a you know, shift in our cars, and I remember we had to walk to school 50 miles and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, the world goes round, and people get old, and they always tell young people how they had to live. <laughs> I have no complaints. I had no problem with having no internet. And uh, so as far as uh, my high school experience, um, I had no phones because phones just hit the market and cell phones were ridiculously expensive and the first phones didn't even look like this. The first phones looked like a house phone. And I, it's funny because I say a house phone and most people don't even have a house phone. So if you're like 12 or 15 or 17, you might not even know what I'm talking about. But a house phone was just that. It was a phone that was mounted to your house and you had a long cable so you can walk around while you're talking but it was not cordless. It was a literal connection, a wire. Um, but uh, yeah, the first cell phones that came out were just like long sticks, let's just say. You know, it's like yay long, kind of looks like this, but it you know didn't fold or anything. When the folding phone, the flip phone came out, that was like, that was big technology. That was super cool. So when I was in high school, no phones. My dad, my senior year, I think, bought a cell phone because he really wanted to try it out, the new thing and everything. And he didn't get reception anywhere. It sucked. It was horrible. <laughs> but uh, so what we had was I had a beeper. And you thought you were cool if you had a beeper because like drug dealers had beepers. And for some reason, when I was in high school, people thought it was cool to be a drug dealer. But I had a beeper. I didn't, um, I didn't deal drugs at school, um, but I did have a beeper. And most times when someone was beeping me, it was my mom to ask where I was. So it really wasn't even cool because when it would beep, people were like, oh, cool. Jeff's got a beeper or whatever. But I wouldn't have to say, or I, I couldn't say who it was. I can't be like, hey, it's my mom. You know, <laughs> I would just be like, oh, I got to call someone. So, uh, and that was short lived too. I think I had a beeper for like a year. Then I think it broke. And so how a beeper worked, it was a little box. And it was just a little square that had like a pocket clip on it. You clipped it to your pants, whatever. And when someone called your beeper number, it would beep, just like you think. That's why it's called a beeper. And it would have a little screen on top and it would flash. It would either have a message or a phone number. All right. So you couldn't actually call anyone or pick up on a beeper. So imagine this, imagine someone had a phone somewhere and they called your beeper and it would say, hey, call me, or it would just have a phone number. And what you would have to do was now go find a phone, <laughs> okay? So in my case, it was usually a payphone somewhere. So someone sent me a message that said, hey, call me, but the device I couldn't talk on, I had to go find a phone, then I had to put money in the phone in order to call them back. You know, it's pretty funny. I saw a comedian recently talking about this, and it's so true. Um, when I grew up, I remember, I was born in 1984, so I'm not really an 80s kid. I'm a 90s kid. I don't consider, you know, when I was six years old or five years old to be like, you know, because I don't remember a lot of stuff when I was five or six. I remember some things, 
But I would say I, I was a 90s kid for sure, because from 1990, I remember everything to 2000. So uh, being a 90s kid and using pay phones and dial up internet and all that kind of stuff, it, it's just fun explaining this to younger generations, specifically my niece and nephew. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like when my parents like dropped me off at a friend's house or something, they just kind of hoped I made it home. There was no GPS, you know, I didn't have an air tag on me so that they didn't have to worry about anyone abducting me or anything or, you know, in fact, a lot of the stuff that we did, uh, no one knew about. But now growing up as a kid, there's cameras everywhere. And again, your parents have like your cell phone and, uh, you know, GPS on you. And like I said, air tags and other you know, different forms of, of knowing where you are at all times. Not to mention everything you do is captured and shared on social media. You know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, there was no TikTok. I mean, you know, there was no um, no YouTube. You know, there was, there was nothing like where people are Facebook or anything like that. So people weren't like constantly filming their entire life, every second of it, and sharing it with the world. So we did a lot of bad things. And, and if you didn't get caught and the cops didn't, uh, you know, call your parents, your parents didn't know about it. That's all. A lot of secrets. <laughs> you hope to uh, to not get caught, right? So anyway, I'm not I'm not saying that it was it was better that we didn't get caught. Uh, there's certain good things like as if I had kids now, which I don't, but if I had kids, I love the idea that I can put a GPS tracker on them and I can just know where they are at all times. You know, I don't want to be like an overbearing parent, you know, but you know, when you have kids, you want to keep track of them. That's just how it is. I, I can't imagine. It was just a different time. The people lived a very different life then. But anyway, so I was visiting my folks and uh, it was my brother-in-law, um, Vinny. You guys know Vinny from some of the hot sauce videos and stuff. It was his birthday, um, so we all got together, you know, had a little bit of a family party and stuff, and I got there the uh, the day before and spent the night so I could hang out with my folks, talk to them and stuff, and my mom had, she was going through a bunch of things, mom was always trying to do cleanups, every time I go there she's getting rid of stuff, <laughs> so she, she saved every cell phone that her and my dad has ever had. And my sister, she had phones my sister got rid of, and, and my original phone was there. That's what prompted me to make this video and talk about it here. Um, because she was always worried about, like, personal information. You know, like having a SIM card in there, and she didn't really understand how it worked and stuff. So she always saved them. You know, kind of like a computer. Like, you don't know, just throw it out. You kind of destroy it first so no one can get your information, that kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> so she wanted to go through and see if we wanted any of them, whatever, and just, you know, ask me and uh, Christina um, to, uh, to just kind of get rid of them for her, essentially. So uh, going through, I saw this one in the pile. And it was cool, too, because my sister had her old phone. It was, I forget what model, but like the top flipped open and, you know, you got the keyboard, which was a huge advancement, by the way. So if you're younger and you don't know, this is how cell phones used to be. A lot of them were these flip phones. And if you look at the numbers here, all right, the numbers have letters on them. I think it's, um, I want to say T9, maybe. I forget the terminology for what this is, but... So when you, have, when you want to use uh, letters on a, a keypad like this, a number pad, you have to use them uh, accordingly. So let's say I want to type uh, my name, Jeff, right? I go to number five, it's J-K-L. So I hit it once and that would type the letter J. If I want to type the, the letter L, I'd have to hit three times. Same thing with a K, two times. So you get how this works. If I wanted a C, I hit number two, three times. One, two, three. So for my name, Jeff, it would be five, right? And then I'd go three, three for E, and then three, three, three for F, and then three, three, three for F. If I want to say hello, you go to H, right? So you got to scroll, okay, because here's H, and I did this even back then. I don't know offhand, be like, bup, 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 bup. I had to always kind of search, oh, where's the letters? There it is, okay, H is number four, but it's the second one, so one, two. Can you imagine how long it took to, uh, to type a message? I voice type everything. Now, granted, I have tons of errors all the time because I'm, you know, my phone's not understanding what I'm saying. Maybe I'm mumbling. Maybe I'm talking too low, whatever. So I, I don't proofread, which is unfortunate. So if you send messages to me, more than likely you don't know what I'm saying half the time. But, you know, some people can decode my messages. But I'm just saying the technology was certainly different. So that's how we actually would text. We'd be like this, bop, 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 bop. So if you want to text a word that was, you know, six letters long, sometimes you have to literally hit buttons 10 times or 12 times. It just really depends on what you're typing. So that's how we used to text. Um, it was a huge deal to have like a camera. Wow, this phone has a camera. Now it's obviously just, you know, standard. And the camera quality was absolutely horrible and you couldn't store many camera pictures, you know, inside your phone, things like that. Um, you can see the large speaker on the back here. If I didn't have a reception, guess what? I'd pull out my antenna. 
All right, so it's like, oh, I'm not getting any service here. Let's try that. And you know, and you think, well, like, how's that any different than just moving my phone to here, right? <laughs> but sometimes it helped, sometimes it didn't. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of cool too. You're like, oh wait, hold on, I'm not getting any reception here. And then you're like, hello, hello. And you still didn't get reception usually. So yeah. And back then, if you went to the mall, there'd be like kiosks. And I don't know if they still have those. I haven't seen one in years, but you know, you want to get like a cell phone or a new plan or something like that. It was a big deal. And phones, phones are expensive now. They were always expensive. You know, back then, maybe a $200 phone would be, would seem expensive because that's the most expensive phone there was. Now, of course, there's iPhones that are 1500 bucks, which is ridiculous. But keep in mind too, with inflation, our money's just worth less. So like when you pay more for things now, and that's something else, as I get older, I'm going, oh my God, I'm having like sticker shock. Everything's too expensive. That has a lot to do with inflation. Uh, obviously, prices are going up, but it's really just our dollar has less buying power. But uh, anyway, one of the, the funny things was when you like, because kids, you know, had phones just like they have now. Not as young, by the way. Okay, when I was growing up, you were not eight years old and have a cell phone. Hell no. Uh, you'd be lucky if you got a cell phone when you're like 15 or 16. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't a thing. Now, like, kids just have them. Like, they're in kindergarten, like, you know, having conference calls and stuff with each other. Uh, that's a little ridiculous, but I understand the safety point of it. Uh, if I had cell phones in school, <laughs> and I know some of you older people watching, you're thinking the same thing. If I had a cell phone in school, man, the trouble we'd get in, right? So I don't know how kids keep them in their pocket and they're not constantly like just, you know, looking at porn and, and making jokes and, you know, streaming through and sending memes to each other and all the rest of that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, so my original cell phone, there it is. Oh, what was I getting at? I kind of got off, off uh, track there. The one thing was like kids didn't take care of their phones, right? So like when your phone broke, the huge thing was that water damage was never covered. So like these phones had these little things in them. All right. So see this little tab right there? This was like a little very um, old fashioned way to see if you have water damage. When that gets wet, I think it turns like solid red or something, it turns some color or something like that. All right, same with the battery here. You see that tiny little red thing? This is a water indicator. So if your phone ever got wet and it broke and like you went back to the mall or went back to Verizon or AT&T or whatever, and you said, uh, hey, um, you know, my phone's broken, I want a new one, because they'd always have coverage. The first thing that people would do is they take the back off, take the battery, which PS, this is a replaceable battery. So when your battery dies, because it's a lithium ion battery, and this is actually a very low capacity, this is uh, 1000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt. So this is like, you know, way less than, it's like a third of the size of like an 18650, you know, that some people have in their, their flashlights. But anyway, so when your battery died and you couldn't use it anymore, guess what? You can go to the store, you go Radio Shack. That's right, Radio Shack was open back then. And you buy a new battery for 20 bucks. So your $80 phone or $200 phone, whatever it is, you didn't have to throw it out. Now when your battery dies, everything's internal. You can't replace your battery. But anyway, so you take your battery and you pop your new battery on and you were good to go. I forget, I think this can't in this way. And yeah, so you can replace your battery. That was actually a really nice feature back then. But anyway, so let's talk about water damage. Uh, yeah, you go to the mall and you're like, man, my phone's messed up. I need a new one for free. And they're like, take the back off. And they go, nope. Yeah, water damage here. Sorry, that's not covered. And then you're just uh, SOL. So anyway, yeah, that was uh, a nice little blast in the past. Pretty cool. So yeah, there's my, my original cell phone. Just want to make this video um, for all the young kids. This will get thrown out now because I have no use for it anymore. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I just thought it'd be kind of fun to uh, to share and, and kind of you know talk about that a little bit. Technology, I, I did. I grew up in a very interesting time period because going from you know the the '90s to the 2000s was a big transition in technology, and then 2000s to the 2010s, that was again a huge advancement in things. And you know now being in the, the 2020s. Um, it's just interesting. I, I can't imagine what it was like for people who, you know, were born in the 40s and are still alive today. The stuff they saw, the transitions they saw, everything from politics to technology to automobiles. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Um, as a human, like as a species, we've evolved so much in the last hundred years compared to our entire existence. It's it's crazy. We're on like super drive, you know, just constantly advancing. And then, of course, you have these different ideas like back in the 90s. You thought that in 2023, we'd be, you know, floating around in hovercrafts and stuff. And, 
So you, you kind of overshoot the technology sometimes too. You know, growing up, people thought it would be a lot different than it is now. Now we do have all kinds of stuff like, again, a modern cell phone, because when we had these cell phones, you had uh, a very rudimentary internet, and that wasn't even when these came out, that was way later. So like the idea that now you break out your cell phone and you can go on Google and literally ask any question in the world and have an answer, that is tremendous. I remember, I remember being in school and our math teacher telling us, you have to learn this stuff. You can't just, you're not gonna walk around with a calculator. <laughs> well, guess what? We do, we all do. We have a calculator, we have uh, every answer to every question we've ever seen. We have so much entertainment, you can't live long enough to even see a half of a percent of it. It's just, it, it's mind boggling to think of the differences now than then. But, uh, but yeah, I just kind of want to share this. I thought, you know, some of the younger viewers would get a laugh at my, my old flip phone here. But this was the coolest thing in the world at the time. And now it is an outdated um, piece of junk. No one want to caught dead with that phone today. Now, people still use flip phones. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you just want to make some calls, it makes you know perfect sense why you spend a bunch of money on a pocket computer when you just need a cell phone. You know, that's what things were. They, they, a cell phone was a phone. You know what I'm saying? Most of the stuff you did on your phone was talk to people. Now, people have $1,000 cell phones and they don't even make a call because they don't want to talk on the phone. They, you know... Beep, boop, 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 boop. I just text. It's more convenient. When you're texting, you have full control of the conversation. When you talk to someone on the phone, um, it's in the moment. It's right then. Every emotion, you know, comes out, how, how your voice is, whether you're, you're laughing or not laughing, or if you're serious or not serious, if you're sad, you can't hide that emotion when you're, when you're talking to someone, when you have an, an audio phone call. Um, so people, especially with relationships and stuff, they like to text because, I don't know, you just have more control. In business, you have more control texting. You know, you have the advantage of being able to talk to someone and someone says something, especially arguments. Arguments are the biggest thing. If someone could say something to you <clears throat> that's extremely argumentative and you can take a deep breath and think about what you want to say, you can take a minute, you could take five minutes, you could think about it all day long before you actually respond to them. So conversations used to take you know, 15 seconds. Hey, I'm here. I'm going to do this later. I'm going to do that. Do you want anything? No, you don't want anything. All right, cool. See you later. Done. Literally 10 second phone call. That same conversation now, depending on who you're talking to, if they're driving, if they're at work or whatever, that could be like a 25 minute conversation. Hey, what do you want to eat? Tick, 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 tick. Hey, okay. I want Taco Bell. Okay. What do you want? What do you want for Taco Bell? Burp, 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 burp. <laughs> just waiting. Hey, give me a chalupa. You sure you want to shoot the last time you didn't, you know, and this is the conversation just goes on and on, right? So communication has slowed down in that sense with texting, but, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, it is cool, the progression, obviously, you know, I enjoy the internet. I'm on it right now. <laughs> you guys are watching me on the internet right now. So uh, it's made a lot of things possible, but I don't know. Um, like I said, all the bad stuff's there too. Uh, I, one bad thing I think is 24 hour news. I think that it causes severe anxiety and paranoia and anger and frustration when people watch the news 24 hours a day. You can get news stories any second, every second, all day long, your entire life, just constant news. And guess what the news broadcasts? Bad stuff. All right. Very seldom do you see a really great story on the news, right? Hey, this old lady was walking across the street and a truck was coming down the road and someone knocked her out of the way and guess what? She's still alive. No, that's not a great story. No one wants to tell that story because that doesn't make any money. What makes money is, hey, there's an old lady walking down the street and guess what? She got hit by a truck and that's it. That's the story. Uh, and then the gore, you see all this stuff, you know, in the news. They don't, they didn't show dead bodies back in the day. They didn't show a lot of the graphic stuff. Now they just give you a warning and they show it to you. It's no big deal. The internet has desensitized people. Um, but like I said, people who are like obsessed with uh, politics and news and news stories, it's always the end of the world. The end of the world is always tomorrow. There's constant things, one thing after another, these, these, these things that in the 90s, we just didn't know about. There was stuff going on in Russia in the 90s, we just didn't hear about it every day. It was a major event, maybe it'd be in the newspaper, maybe someone read the newspaper and talked about it at school, maybe you overheard a teacher talking about it, but it wasn't like, it was a less stressful life. With all the, the massive amounts of information that's pumped into our, our heads every single second of every day, that we're on our cell phone or have a TV on or a computer open or something, 
Um, it causes stress, it causes anxiety. A lot of it's so negative, you know? Obviously, we use things like this for entertainment and for joy. Watch a lot of YouTube videos because you enjoy them. But like I said, with the, the constant communication all around the world, 24 seven, you know, the advertisements 24 seven too, that was something different. You know, back then you'd be driving down the road and you see a billboard, that was an advertisement. But now you wanna watch a video and you gotta watch an advertisement first. You know, and then maybe in the middle and then maybe at the end. And then, you know, when you finally click out of the video and then you open up the main screen, there's an advertisement over here and over here and over here and over here. So, yeah, I mean, everyone's out to make money. So that's why we have so much advertisements. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm just kind of rambling on now. I don't even know how long this video is. I've just been spewing information. But uh, I thought it'd be fun. So there you go. That was my, my first uh, cell phone. In case you're ever sitting around thinking, man, what was... What was Jeff's first cell phone? <laughs> well, it is your lucky day. It's this one, which was from Verizon. I don't even remember what the model was called or anything. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. And, uh, you know, having an iPhone today, I can't imagine what it's going to be like in 20 years, what the technology is going to be like, you know. But the question is, have we peaked? Have we advanced so fast, so quickly, that now the advancement, you start gapping, you know what I'm saying? Like, so much information, right? And then now, wow, we doubled how much we know. Well, we tripled how much, we quadrupled. At some point, it, does it get slowed down where now like the advancement technology takes longer? And then the next day, we next decade, we, we know even less more stuff. Is that, <laughs> that's not the right way to say that. Even less more stuff. That's probably not correct. But you know what I'm saying, right? Have we peaked technologically? And then now we're just gonna be like, duh, you know, and, and in the future, you know, I, it's funny, there's a cult classic movie, I know some of you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's called Idiocracy. My father and I love that movie, and occasionally gets referenced because that is where we're heading. We are heading truly to a world where, you know, we see in the movie Idiocracy. A hilarious movie, by the way, if you never saw it, you have to watch it. But if you never saw it and you do watch it, you'll understand what I'm saying, because that's, that's our future, <laughs> here in America at least, uh, and probably around the world. Um, if we keep up what we're doing now... That's what you got to look forward to. All right. So anyway, that's all for now. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. If you uh, remember your first cell phone, feel free to post it down in the comment section. I know some of the comments are going to be an iPhone 8 or something. That's cool. If you're young, that's your first phone. That's what it is. Maybe you never had a cell phone until you were 40 and that was your first phone. I don't know, but I'm curious. So post it down in the comment section. What was your first cell phone ever and what is your current cell phone? I'd be interested to, uh, to hear. Like I said, this is my first, and I currently carry an iPhone, and to be honest, I don't remember which one. It's my wife's hand-me-down. Maybe a 10X or something, or an 11. I don't even know what they're at. I know there was some new ones since, since this one, but, you know. Anyway, that's all for now. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow here on the Internet in great 2023 <laughs> with a new video. Take care.